Number three then from this new hire specimen paper number one, a little vectors question. Five marks. And all it says after all the information is just find the coordinates of S. No other clues apart from this diagram and these two statements here. Now I actually quite like this little question because it's like that ninja warrior thing that's on the telly just now about how do you get across these little points to the end, those sort of wobbly pillars with the wee mushroom tops. Will you leap across them confidently or will you gingerly jump and cling on to each and then on to the next until you make your way to the end? Because that's almost like the different ways that are of answering this question. Well, first of all, what we've got now is vectors, but in terms of this, the vectors are displacements, how you get from one point to another. And it tells you the initial one here, whoops, missed that out, tells you how to get from P to Q in this unit base vector fashion, these I's and J's and K's. Now, an I is just a little, in terms of the axis, you've got your X axis, the Y axis, that's lying flat horizontally, and then up into the area you've got the Z axis. That little I vector just means to take one step, that's why it's called a unit vector, one step in the direction of X. Not leading towards Y or Z at all. J means to take one step in the direction of Y. And K means to take one step in the direction of Z. That's why they're unit vectors, because they're all just one step each. And they're called base vectors, because based on them, by using combinations of them, you can go wherever you like. So this says, I'm going to go six steps forward, 12 steps along Y, and then actually go down six steps. But you'd probably prefer, in terms of a calculation, to set it out in components, which would just be 6, 12, negative 6. So what are the ways of getting from P to S? Well, let's be a bit of a coward first of all and just gingerly clamber over and cling on to Q. Because I know how to get from P to Q, there's the instructions, and I know where to start, so I should know where to finish, but we'll have to set it out in terms of vector equations. So to get to Q, that'll be the position vector of Q, you would start at P and follow the direction PQ follow the instruction to get from P to Q. So setting that out, P's at negative 6, 3, 9. That was the position vector from the starting platform, the origin. That's what you had to do to get to the first pillar. And now, how do we get to the second pillar? 6, 12, negative 6. Follow those instructions. When you add those together, you've got 0, 15, 3. That's the position vector of Q. Now, I've actually found it, so I'm clinging on to it just now. But I don't think I need to actually write down the coordinates of Q. You could do it if you like, because I'm not finished yet. I'm now concentrating on to get how to get to the next one. So that means I'll need the instruction of how to get from Q to R. Well, here it's here. PQ's double it, so QR means half of the move you made before. I'll just put a wee note of that. QR is a half of PQ. So it'll be a half of the move I made, a half of the 6, 12, negative 6. So that means I'll be moving 3, 6, negative 3. Right, I know how to get to the start. I know the move I need to make, so I know how to get to R. So R's going to be start at Q and follow the instructions, follow displacement, follow the vector QR. What was Q again? Here it was. Notice how I didn't actually need the coordinates because I just wanted that part of it. Plus 3, 6, negative 3. And now I've got myself on to R. That's going to be 3, 21, 0. Now I'm running out of room a bit. Now I've got to finally make my jump from R to S. What's R, S? Well, P, Q is 3 times it. Don't ignore that. Just ignore the middle bit. It's an equation. So you can just equate those parts. So R, S will be a third of P, Q. That means it will be a third of, there's the same number, 6, 12, negative 6, which will be 3, 4, no it won't, 2, 4, negative 2. Now I can get the final answer, so how do I get to S? Since I'm on R just now, and the position vector of, oops, put it down first of all, I'm at R, and I'm going to add on RS. 
So I know R because I'm clinging on to it just now. 3210. 0. I know the move I need to make. 2, 4, negative 2. So that finally takes me to 5, 25, negative 2. It said what are the coordinates, not the position vector. So after all that, I'll say, well, S is the point, 5, 25, negative 2. That took a lot of work. Not counting this bracket here. How many brackets did I have to write down altogether before I got to this answer? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 of them. But you could probably see from this that you could have shortened it. Because, strictly speaking, if I didn't really want to cling that hard onto each of those intermediate points, then all I really need to do is find how I move from one to the other. You could have saved some calculation here. So, you might have said, well, I'm not going to mess about working out what these intermediate holds are. How could, if I want to get to S, how do I get there straight away? Well, I'd need to work out these two, certainly. I know that move, so I would just say, well, what's this move and what's that move? Because I could just add them all together to get the final move. So once I've got those moves, I could just say, well, I could go straight away by working out PS. Because what is PS, after all? It's PQ plus, whoops, QR plus RS. And I think, strictly speaking, I wouldn't need to replicate these three down here. I should be able just to add them in one go, just by inspection. But I'll put it down anyway. So that was 6, 12, negative 6 plus 3, 6, negative 3, plus 2, 4, negative 2. Those would be the moves it would take. So the resultant move of those three displacements will be found by adding them together. 6 and 3 and 2 is 11. 12 and 6 and 4 is 22. And that must be just the negative of that, negative 11. And now I'll just boldly jump in one go. This looks a bit better. So how can I get to S? Start at P and go straight from P to S. Start at P, negative 6, 3, 9, and go straight from P to S, 11, 22, negative 11, which of course gives you the same answer, 5, 25, negative 2, making S, 5, 25, negative 2. There, yeah, that looks a little bit better. Although, not including the first one, what have I got this time? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh. It's just a wee bit shorter than 11 then. So there, you could have used either of those two techniques. The second one looked better than the first one. But there's a much shorter way that could be done. I'd say, here, look, there's a connection between these line segments. PQ is twice as big as QR and three times as big as RS. Why don't we just get the ratios of these? What's the ratio of PQ to QR to RS? Well, that would be 1. QR is a half of it, and that's a third of it. Or, putting it down a different way, because a ratio should be made up of whole numbers, that would be multiplying everything by 6 to make them whole numbers, 6 to 3 to 2. That's 6 steps to 3 steps to 2 steps. Which means, in one fell swoop, PS, the complete displacement, is 11 steps compared to the 6 of PQ. PS is 11 upon 6 times PQ. So that, how could I get S straight away? Start at P and add on 11 sixths of PQ. Let's put down a couple of brackets. P was negative 6, 3, 9. 11 sixths of 6, 12, negative 6. And I think... It's only a little bit of arithmetic. I can go straight down to a bracket here simply by doing this calculation. 6 into 6 goes 1 times 11 is 11. Take away 6 is 5. 6 into 12 goes 2. 22 and 3 is 25. 6 into negative 6 is negative 1. Negative 11 plus 9, negative 2. There we go. 5, 25, negative 2. Yeah!